Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. Really Big Plant. So for this video, we are doing some plant chores, but with a theme, and the theme being that I'm trying to clean up my plants to have some guests over. So my in-laws are coming, my brother-in-law and my husband's parents are coming to stay with us in a couple of days, and I need to clean up my plant collection and get it looking a little more presentable for guests. Um, nothing's wrong with my plants right now, but if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm the kind of person who doesn't really mind leaving brown leaves on my plants. It somehow aesthetically doesn't bother me that much. Although, since moving into this house and having super white walls and like this bright white kitchen, it does bother me a little bit more than it used to. But anyway, I'm usually the kind of person who will like let my plants look really messy and it's not like the most aesthetic look. So we're gonna go through and clean up some of the plants today and just make them look a little bit more presentable. I have some plant updates that I wanna show you. Um, I moved a plant outside and it's not happy and I wanna take care of that and show you what's going on. So yeah, just a bunch of odds and ends. Okay, let's get into it. I have this Ficus benjamina here, this plant, which, um, is done with spider mites. I've watched it a couple of times since I showed it to you a few videos ago and um, it's starting to grow. This was an original plant rescue. I can't remember if I showed this in my trash plants video but I brought this plant home for free from one of the plant shops that I worked in years ago because it had dropped all of its leaves and was taking a really long time to regrow and plant shops just can't sell a naked plant even if it's gonna grow back eventually. It usually has more to do with the fact that there's nowhere to like rehabilitate a dying plant in a plant shop because if you have a window, usually that's like the front of the store windows and you don't wanna put a dead plant in the window, but that's where the dying plant wants to go because it needs to grow new leaves. So anyway, I ended up with this Ficus Benjamina. I've had it for years now and I never, I've never pruned back some of these branches. You can see that there are all these branches and twigs and stuff in here that have absolutely no leaves on them. And I was leaving them there partially out of laziness, but partially also because I wasn't sure if they were going to grow new leaves eventually. Now, it's been a very long time with no leaves on those branches, so it's safe to cut them off. I mean, it's safe to cut them anyway. If you want to prune a plant, you can always go ahead and prune it. I kept this in a corner in my last apartment and I never rotated it. And this side was in the back. So this is actually probably my fault. These branches might have grown back if I had rotated it and exposed the plant to more light over time. But I actually really like when plants look kind of asymmetrical. So we're gonna prune all these branches off and I bet this is gonna have a really cool looking shape and it won't look half dead. It'll just look very sculptural. The other thing I wanna do is show you how to check for life in a branch that looks dead. This is a really good trick to know if you are a ficus owner because the whole genus of ficus, ficus trees like ficus benjamina and like the fiddle leaf fig, um, my ficus triangularis that I've got looking sad back there. They tend to all be plants that go through periods of leaf drop and it can be hard to tell when you should toss the plant and when it's going to grow back. When you have a branch that you're not sure if it's alive or dead, what you can do is just scrape on the bark and see if there is green living plant matter underneath the surface. So you can use your fingernail or even like a potato peeler or a little knife or something like that if you want and just gently scrape the bark back and see if you can find some green underneath. Um, and if at first you don't find any green, you can scrape a little harder and see if it's in there. Sometimes the bark gets a little bit thick. So that's what you can do to check. Another way to check if you're willing to risk it is you can just see if the branch snaps. Like on a tree like this, this is probably gonna just snap off. Um, the twig just came right off when I applied pressure. Normally, if there's life in there, the branches will bend gently rather than snap. I mean, if you, if you apply a lot of pressure really fast and harsh, you can still snap a living branch, but usually there'll be fibers on the inside that still want to connect the twig. And if it were alive in there, when you snap it, you would see green on the inside too, at least on the ficus benjamina. <laughs> plant 
that looks so nice now. It looks like, like it's got this whole personality now that it's like this sort of asymmetrical shape. I really like it. So, woo, one pruned plant down, way more to go. Let's do that one. So before we get any further, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. I am so excited to be partnering with Skillshare because they have an amazing library of classes that are helping me level up and learn the skills that I need to take this plant channel to the next level. So I've personally been really enjoying their video editing classes. I've been taking the classes by Jordi Vandeput on using Premiere Pro and some of his general filmmaking tips are really helping me out. I've been learning new shortcuts and I think I'm really improving my editing workflow. So hopefully you will continue to see the quality of my videos get better as I continue to learn. Skillshare also has hundreds of classes focused on career building and productivity and it's helpful for me because as my channel has been growing and with encouragement from you I've been thinking more and more about what the future of really big plant could look like if I approached it with a bit more of a plan and Skillshare is really helping me explore those options from classes on creating merch to getting started on TikTok to improving my workflow in general with some of the productivity classes. Skillshare is such a great resource if you are a self-taught plant tuber and creative like me, or if you're just looking for some guidance or motivation on how to create a custom career or side hustle that's perfectly fit for you. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare and I'm so excited to be sharing it with you. So this plant here is a fiddle leaf fig, a ficus laurata. It's very sad looking. This is the fiddle leaf fig tree that starred in my plant, trash plant rescue video. I rescued this plant from one of the shops that I worked in, I don't know, a while ago. It was a plant that had been in the shop for a long time that no one bought. And it started to decline by dropping all its leaves in the way that fiddle leaf figs tend to do when they're not getting enough light and because it was a really small store there was nowhere to put a big very unattractive dying looking ficus so it went into this back storage room where it lived and continued to die for several weeks before it just became trash essentially and i was able to bring it home at no cost and try to rehab it and it did eventually sprout some new leaves um and then i completely ignored it and <laughs> moved here. It's not doing so hot. So I brought it outside a couple weeks ago to wash it off and when I blasted it with the hose, it blasted off all the leaves on the top branch. Um, I thought that it was going to sprout a new bud up there, but I haven't really checked this out since that happened. I just put it here by my door and was hoping that maybe a new leaf would appear, but I think I need to chop off that top branch. So this is not looking great. So yeah, there were leaves up here that fell off now. I don't know if there's a new bud growing. I don't think there's anything happening up here. So what I'll do is I'll start scraping at the top of the branch and work my way down um, and see if there's any green. And where there's green, I would cut right into that green spot and hope that it regrows from there. So let's see if there's any part of this branch that's still alive. No. No. Nope. Hmm. Let's check this one just as a control. Oh, yep, there's green under there. Okay, so this branch is dead, which would explain why it died. Okay, so I think I just super underwatered this and gave it not enough light, not enough water. I like overcompensated knowing that I put it in a dark spot and just like didn't water it. So for me, normally in my experience with fiddle leaf fig trees, leaving them in a less than ideal location and then just dehydrating them and letting them dry out has been historically always okay with my other fiddle leaf fig trees that I've had. They don't really mind going through intense periods of drought. This plant, because I went through all this effort of rescuing it and then put it in really bright light and gave it a lot of care in my last apartment, after I moved and then started to neglect it, I think it was too big of a transitional shock for this plant and it started to really die off. So it needs a little bit more treatment because it got used to nice treatment. I'm gonna just lop it off all the way at the bottom.
<laughs> Whew, that was hard to cut through. And there's no sap coming out of there, so this was a goner. I like this more like this. Look at what a little weirdo it is now. It's like leaning over to the side. <laughs> kind of like it. Fits better into this spot right here, actually, anyway. Yay! This plant doesn't look super happy, does it? <laughs> okay, well, hopefully it can pop back. I don't think those leaves will ever be, like, happy looking because they've just been droopy and sad for a very long time. Um, sometimes once a leaf loses its structural integrity, it can continue to survive without gaining its integrity back. And I think I just let these get too dehydrated too many times that they're not popping back to their regular self, but they're still living, they're still green. You know, now that I cut that, that little like, little nub right there is kind of bothering me. I'm gonna see if I can hack it back a little more. Yeah, okay, that looks better. Okay, this, this beauty in the corner over here is my Sansevieria javoa, whose name is Medusa, by the way. I asked you guys to help me name this plant, like, I don't know, years ago, and I just never announced. But I was already always kind of planning on naming this plant Medusa. I think that was also the most suggested name that you guys put out there. So thank you for helping me think of a name for this snake plant. And she's been living happily in this corner over here. Um, she's definitely not getting as much bright light as she was in my last apartment because I had her like right in the center of where the sun would come in every afternoon, but um, it's doing pretty well. Some of the leaves in my last place started to die back and I had never removed any leaves from this plant. So now we've got some, some dead ones in here and I'm going to just pull them out. With snake plants, usually once the leaf is dead enough, it just comes out like this. So yeah, let's get these out of here. I absolutely love this snake plant. I love snake plants. Sansevieria are one of my favorite genus of plants. Well, they're actually in Dracaena, so they're not called Sansevieria technically anymore, but they will always be Sansevieria in my heart. Um, so I love snake plants and this is just a huge one. I think most people who have these keep them outside, the ones this size, but I love it indoors. I think it's just such an amazing statement plant. The leaves are just so big and stiff. Um, there's just something so stately about a good snake plant. Snake plants, like any other plant, eventually loses some leaves. So if you get a situation like this where you've got these dried up leaves coming out of your snake plant after you've had it for some time, that's normal. Um, it means that maybe you could fertilize a little more because in theory, the plant should be able to hold on to its old leaves if it has enough nutrients. floppiest snake plant in my collection, but I think it's literally just because of gravity. Um, it's just the biggest one and eventually the leaves start to flop over. That's normal for snake plants for that to happen to them over time, especially if they ever do go through periods of dehydration um, and then you water them. When they bounce back, usually if the leaf has flopped over like this, it will stiffen up again, but it's not going to stand back up. Um, what you can do, you can try to stand the leaves back up. You could put like a stick in there or lean it against the wall and straighten the leaf out before you water it again. And sometimes I found that when you water the plant and it gets rehydrated, the leaf will rehydrate standing up. Kind of like when you break a bone, if you put it in a cast, you have to reshape it for it to go back into the proper position. A lot of plants get droopy and then you water them and they perk back up. But snake plants, once the leaves flop over, they usually don't stand back up again unless you take some action to try to encourage it to grow straight. And even then, a lot of times they don't stand back up. I really like having this snake plant right by my door here. So this is the door that I open and close to go outside. And putting this snake plant here is actually a strategic choice because this is where I have the most outside pests 
appear in my house. So I like having this snake plant be the one right by my door because Sansevierias tend to be less susceptible to pests than a lot of other types of house plants, at least the ones in my collection. Um, mainly for physical reasons. Like snake plants have this very thick cuticle. Um, the cuticle is the like the waxy outer layer that some leaves have much thicker than others, like Hoyas, for example, have a very thick cuticle. Um, and you can tell when a plant has a very stiff leaf that it's usually the cuticle on there that's a very thick, waxy um, layer of cells that protects the plant. For a lot of plant pests, even though they do have mouth parts that can sort of cut into leaves and they suck leaf juices out, a lot of pests can't get past the thick cuticle on certain types of plants. So that's why Hoyas and Sansevieria tend to be more pest resistant than other plants with thinner leaves. I like having this one by the door because I feel like this one's probably not going to get infested with like thrips or aphids. I mean, hopefully not, knock on wood now that I say that. But um, <laughs> yeah, I feel some peace of mind knowing that this one is my first line of defense from the outside. If bugs were to get on it, they probably wouldn't have too easy of a time making a home here. So let's get this. So satisfying pulling them out of here when it's such a big plant. I just pulled out a lot of leaves from there, but you can't even tell. Looks great. What doesn't look great is my ficus triangularis right here. Um, I've been struggling with this plant since I moved. It's been just going through lots of leaf drop cycles. Um, it always grows new leaves in, but I've noticed that they tend to just fall right off again right away. I think it probably needs to be repotted. I've never repotted this plant. It probably needs some fresh soil and way more fertilizer. So I'm trying to fertilize this plant more frequently. I'm still trying to figure out the new watering schedule, especially as we're headed into summer here. I used to water this plant once every two weeks and I think I need to be closer to a one week schedule. So I tried to increase the watering. and But last time I watered this plant, the next day I had a whole bunch of yellow leaves that fell off right away. So I actually over watered it. So this plant is going through it right now. I'm just being patient with it. See how these don't look great? Probably gonna drop a whole bunch of leaves again soon, so not much can be done there. I'm just leaving it alone. Let's prune back this big monstera. This plant, I got really worried the other day that I thought this was covered in spider mites, um, but I think it just has regular spiders because every like couple months since I've been living here, I stare at this plant and think that it's covered in spider mites and then I just take it no action and it's been okay, so after all this time, if it had a bad spider mite infestation, this plant would be showing some symptoms of it. All the leaves would be turning yellow, it'd be getting mottling, but that's not really happening. Um, so I think it just has regular spiders on here. I've noticed in this room, there tend to be more spiders than in other parts of my house, probably just because it's like the sunroom and it's closest to outside. So yeah, this Monstera is just doing its thing. Let me show you though, it needs a repotting so badly. We're not doing it today, but let me see if I can show you an angle where you can see how, can you see how tilted the support is? The camera doesn't even show how severe it is, but the, the stake in there is really, really leaning far over and it did not used to be like that. I suspect that it's probably rotting down at the bottom and is starting to break. So I really need to repot this plant. <laughs> That's gonna be a whole challenge. I've been saying that for, I've been saying that for years. I've been saying it for years that I need to repot this plant and it's cause it's true. For now, I just have some dead leaves on here that I wanna get rid of. Um, I don't even know when this happened. I didn't notice this little leaf shrivel up. Oops. Okay, well, the stem is in there somewhere. <laughs> Thank you.
looks so good. I really never do cosmetic touch-ups like this, but it's looking better now. Okay, now let's keep going around this room. My majesty palm, womp womp. <laughs> this leaf broke. Um, and this leaf, the tall one also broke, um, but there's an old frond that I tied it to. So it's being supported on another like broken off frond. I thought this was making a miraculous comeback after I repotted it back in San Francisco, but since moving here, this definitely needs a bigger pot, especially since it's drier here, but I've been trying to keep up with the watering and make sure I don't ignore this plant um, because I did think that maybe it was gonna finally die, but it's still alive, it's still growing new fronds. This is a new frond that's coming in. Um, it did try to just grow a new one that didn't open properly, so I maybe need to stick a little humidifier over here for this plant, but I also kind of wanna just see if they can figure it out because it's made it this far. So this majesty palm I thought was doing okay, um, but I was just staring at it just now and spider mites look worse than it has in a while. So I think I might actually do some drastic pruning I'm in a pruning kind of mood. So I think I might just cut this plant way back down. Um, the reason why I haven't is because I always worry that if I cut too drastically, it might not grow back, especially when it's a struggle plant like this one. Um, but it's maybe worse if it's just completely covered in spider mites. So I should probably, for the sake of my other plants, get rid of these huge fronds, which are mite infested. So let's do that. I also want to prune this Dracaena and normally order of operations, I would do the Dracaena before I touch this plant that's super infested with spider mites. I try to save tasks that I know involve touching heavily infested plants for the end of my plant chores day. Um, but these two plants are touching, so <laughs> it's probably fine. Um, I mean, if this one's got spider mites, it's got them already because this whole frond has the mites. So I'm just gonna cut this back. Okay. Alocasia labrabachiana still has spider mites. Understandably, it's underneath this palm tree, which is infested. Moving that plant to the side so that when I chop the leaves off, the shower of mites that falls down doesn't fall on it make the problem even worse. Okay. I put on shoes and I'm taking the fronds straight outside because I don't want to put them on the ground because they're covered in mites. I think I'm going to just chop this all the way back and just hope it regrows. Keep your fingers crossed for this majesty poem. struggling with this decision to cut this back. I feel so sad. Um, but the infested leaves aren't going to become uninfested, I don't think, at this point. Like, especially this bent one, this is never going to stand back up, so I guess I have to part with it. Bye, leaf. Okay, but hopefully it'll grow back. There's this new frond on here. This cute little one. Um, but it's covered in spider mites, so I gotta spray that down. But I wanna continue my pruning crusade right now and prune up that plant and hopefully get around to spraying that one down uh, a little later today. Just a whole branch of this died off back here. Okay, let's cut that.
Whoops. <laughs> so this unfortunately died off. Um, this was the branch that was up against the window directly, and these windows get a lot of direct sun during the peak of the day. And it makes sense to me, I guess, that this plant is having a hard time with the sun. Even though in nature, Dracaenas would love some direct sunlight plus high humidity, um, I kept this plant in a low light location for its entire life. And then when I moved here, I put it in this spot, and I guess over the past few months, it's leaned in front of the window and I didn't notice that this crisped up back there. It was so acclimated to darkness and to low light for its whole life that once it did start to get some bright sun, it just killed off this bit. Okay, does that look so much better? Let's go a little further away so we can see. Okay, ignore all the leaf piles, but I feel like that looks a lot better. That doesn't look so good, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel like that's looking better. It's looking better. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so this is my entryway. My front door is right over there. Um, and I want to put some plants here just temporarily. So this area has been a bit of an experiment to see what plants can live here. Um, I've got windows in this room behind me, but there's like, let me show you, there's a doorway here and there's windows there and then there's windows over there. Oh gosh, it's messy. I wasn't going to show that way. <laughs> But I've got windows over there, but this space here doesn't actually get that much light. It's pretty dark. Um, I eventually want to put like a console table or something here or make it a nice little entrance, but it's really not been a priority just because, I don't know, I, I mean, I'm still waiting for my bed to arrive, so <laughs> this has not been a priority space for me. I did buy this pot from Lowe's and I wanted to buy a tree to go in there, but I realized that I probably shouldn't just buy a new tree and sacrifice it to the dark in this spot. So I wanna just go grab a different plant from somewhere else in my house and put it here temporarily while my in-laws are here so that it can look nice in this little area. Um, but yeah, to elaborate on the lighting a little bit, I've got these two plants here. This is a ZZ Raven and this is a Sansevieria Jaboa. Um, a small version of like the big one that we were looking at earlier. And these are not doing super well here. They're not really growing. And this one has actually been, has been dying back. Um, why does this feel so weird? What is going on with this? Let's get this out. It feels like it's like elastic, which is a strange thing I've never experienced with a plant before. Pulling a leaf out of a snake plant? Wow, this must be attached in some kind of... Okay, whoops, first of all, ignore all the hair. This must be... Oh my gosh, is there a rubber band? Is that a rubber band? Oh, okay, I gotta get this out of here. There is a rubber band holding this plant together, which I guess makes sense to me because this is a thing I found inside of snake plants before and there's some plants where um, when the growers propagate them, they will use a rubber band to hold together bundles of the plant, which, um, makes sense when you're mass producing plants from small cuttings and small propagations. But as the plant starts to get older, sometimes a rubber band can cause a bit of a problem. It can cause um, what's called girdling, which is when a plant gets uh, squeezed by a tie or something restricting it. And that can eventually inhibit new growth in that area. So, um, and can cause dieback and improper nutrient availability to the part of the plant that's being cut off by whatever squeezing it. Okay, so I was just saying how I think this plant isn't getting enough light, which is weird because it's a snake plant and this is like, it should be ample light for this plant, but I figured that it was not growing here because of a lighting issue, but maybe it was actually a rubber band issue. 
Um, so that's interesting because all of the dead leaves that I just pulled out were right there. So I think they were just getting too squished by that rubber band. Now, since I cut through it, the rubber band is still in the pot, but it shouldn't be an issue anymore because it's not strangling anything. So I'm gonna put this back. Now what I wanna do is get a plant from somewhere else in my house and put it in this pot here. Something big and green here, I think it'll look nice. So I think what I'm gonna do is take one of the plants from my stairwell up here. Okay. So I've got this little landing. I'm whispering because my husband's office is right there and he's on a call. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to take that ficus and move it into the pot because this doesn't actually have a cover pot. So I think that's going to be a good choice. I just don't know if it's going to fit. Drop it in here. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get it back out. Okay, here goes. Oh, my fingers. Ah! Okay. Oh, wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> okay. Great. Looks great there, huh? Okay, so this is only a temporary home for this plant because this location is gonna be too dark to keep this happy. Um, this, by the way, is a Ficus Altissima Yellow Gem. So it looks a lot like a rubber tree, but it's just got a slightly different kind of thing going on with the leaves. The leaves are a little bit thinner and it's supposed to have a yellow border, but where I had this plant up on my staircase landing, it was already not getting enough light up there, even though it's got a pretty big window. And I noticed on these ficus yellow gems that the yellow tends to fade back pretty quick unless you put it in a really, really bright light. So anyway, got it here for now. Definitely gonna have to move it back into a brighter light location. But for now, fits perfectly in that pot. I just think it looks great. So hooray. So now what I wanna do, I've already got my pruners in hand, is I want to show you a plant that I put outside by my front door and it's not doing well, so let's go take a look. Okay, so part of living in the suburbs now is that I have neighbors who are neighborly, as in very attentive to other people's activities, so I'm gonna talk quietly out here. I know, I'm just filming a little video. Is it stressing you out? I'm okay, so I brought you out here to show you Womp Womp. <laughs> so this is my multiple Monstera. I had all of these like small four inch pots of Monstera. I think I had five of them and I potted them all together in a plant drawer, I don't know, a really long time ago. This had a pretty bad spider mite infestation and I had kind of isolated it from the rest of my plants by putting it in the guest room that you guys just saw behind me in the mirror. And then a couple weeks ago, I had a friend come stay and I wanted to take this plant out of the room because it was looking very sad and it like clearly had spider mites. So I decided that I was gonna just pop it outside. I figured it was gonna be okay. And I put it out here and within a day, <laughs> this happened. So. It got totally scorched. Every single leaf on it got burnt and I have been watering it and keeping it out here for the past couple weeks in hopes of seeing some new growth and nothing is happening on it. Um, I think the spider mites are gone because I put it outside and things probably came and ate the mites or they got blown away in the wind. I'm gonna start just pruning this back. You're looking for the perfect statement plant to say, welcome to my house, we are on fire. <laughs> this might be the option you're looking for. This is like 
slug damage or something. But I haven't seen too many slugs on the Monstera because I think they don't like it. This is just one of the leaves that was on the ground. Ugh, I don't know what to do with this Monstera. The problem is that it's mainly the new leaves. Like this is the newest leaf. This is the newest leaf. So if you cut it at the base, it'll cut through the place where the new leaf is developing. So for some of the branches, like you see this one, I left this stalk on here because you can see this is where the new leaf is gonna come out. Okay, so like for example, this is the newest leaf on this particular stalk. So this, this line you see here, is where the new leaf is gonna pop out. This is the sheath for the next leaf. So if you're gonna cut this leaf back, but you want the plant to continue to grow from this point, you're gonna wanna cut above where you see this line. So right here. from ideal but it's looking a lot better than it was before so I guess that's how it's gonna be for now <laughs> here's what we removed plus I only cut back one chunk that's big enough to propagate so there we have it I feel like when I take a propagation from a plant that I know had some kind of pest infestation and then I can like wash the whole thing in the sink, it feels so good to know that I'm actually like getting this piece of plant fully clean. So yeah, I feel unexpectedly happy while washing off this <laughs> little propagation. <laughs> and this has one, two, three, four, five nodes on it, but I think I'm just gonna cut this into like two pieces. I definitely don't need more Monsteras. Okay, I'm gonna just put these in this empty cup and wait like a day to add water, just so the fresh cut ends can harden off a little bit, just because sometimes when you put a fresh cut propagation straight into water, it rots more quickly, um, so and I found that to be the case, like the chunkier the stem is, the more likely it is to rot if you put it straight into water. So this has kind of like a chunky stem, so I'm gonna let these just dry up in here for like a day. Whee! Oh wow, it looks way better. You think so? Yeah. yeah. You just like prune it? Yeah, or like look at how much I yeah, cut no, it. it like, no, it's, I it's, cut up the leaves into looks, like weird shapes. It looks way better. Okay, I'm glad you think that. Yeah, no, it looks way better. There's obviously still some burnt parts, but... Thank you so much for watching this. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. I feel so glad to get to share this little cleanup with you because I feel like it's in the moment where I'm like picking the brown leaves off my plants that always make me feel like I'm actually getting my life together. So <laughs> there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that your plants are bringing you joy and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.